and we'll begin this, and then Bob knows which is which. Okay, all right. Um, Timothy, would you begin with the word of prayer, please? Okay, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we are going to us, Father, Father, that we are going to learn more about the precious blood, about your precious blood as we, your, your science, as we are many science. We thank you for this great opportunity that we have given to us to learn more about your, your, your blood. We thank you for the gift of life, and, and then we thank you for the that you provided us uh, the data and all the resources that we can connect and learn more. We thank you in, in Jesus' name. We pray. All right. Turn with me to the book of First Corinthians. Well. Uh, turn with me to the book of Mark, the book, the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 14, please. Mark chapter 14. Jesus here in the book of Mark chapter 14, he is telling us about his blood. He is defining what this blood means. Really, this is really un uh, underlying or describing or defining the, um, the, the communion, um, the institution of the Lord's table. So he's defining what the blood means. And if you look in Mark chapter 14, verse 22, remember that Jesus instituted the Lord's commemoration of his table before his death. So he is in the upper room and he is, he is defining what it means before his death. Okay? So look in Mark 14, verse 22. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. That's what this blood is, you see. It is the premise or the basis of the New Testament, the new covenant. This is why Jesus came as a man, because God demanded the ultimate sacrifice. And for us to have this new covenant in his grace... We must then, um, we, we, must, we must substantiate it by the blood of Jesus Christ. He is God's lamb. Remember when John the Baptist in the Gospel of John um, introduces us to Jesus Christ. He says, behold, the lamb of God who expiates, takes away the sin of the world. So you see those Old Testament sacrifices were given uh, to them by grace. But we understand that they only atoned for sin because they were the shadow of the law. And so um, Jesus Christ is the very image of God. He is the direct representation and full manifestation of God. And his sacrifice, his blood, expiates sin, takes away sin. And his blood uh, substantiates, establishes this New Testament. And it purchases us eternal redemption. You see, redemption comes by two things, power and blood. 
Now, let me give you an example of that in the Old Testament. Jesus said in the book, or I'm sorry, God told Israel in the book of Exodus chapter 12, concerning the Passover, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Right? So that is the principle. If, and remember that when God came to judge the firstborn of man and beast, when he saw the blood, that judgment was stayed. And those in Israel who applied the blood by faith on the threshold, when God saw the blood of that lamb, his judgment of death was stayed. Okay? Now, okay. that... That principle is established in Scripture. When Jesus comes and he sheds his blood, as you have stated, the precious blood, that word precious means with eternal value. Eternal value. The precious blood of Christ. God's judgment against sin is stayed. And purchased for us is an eternal redemption. Now, I'm going to show you these passages so that you will understand what I'm about to teach about. Because of the poor reception and connection sometimes, I'm introducing everything, then teaching it. So I'm going to introduce those ideas to you now, okay? Now, let's look... Let's look at what occurs in heaven. Look in the book of Revelation. We're going to go to um, the past or the, or the future and work backward, okay? So in Revelation chapter 5, what does this blood mean? Well, look in Revelation chapter 5. You will see the end result of this blood. The book of Revelation chapter 5 and in verse 8. Verse 8 of Apocalypse, or Revelation, chapter 5. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them hearts and golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Where these guys are at. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and language or tongue and people and nation. So look at that as point number one. Okay? Thou hast redeemed us. Paid the price, bought us out of the marketplace of sin, and out of uh, by the blood, out of every kindred, kin, uh, out of every kindred uh, language, people, and nations. Number two, and has made us unto our God a kingdom of priests. That's number two. He's made us a kingdom of priests. He's purchased us with his blood for a purpose. And lastly, and number three, we shall reign on the earth. So the lamb is both our savior and our great high priest and our king. And we have been redeemed, purchased with the price. That price is his blood. That has both, it is both the power of God and the blood of God that redeems us, purchases us with the price. Okay? So we see the eternal value here in heaven. All right? And the, um, we see here present is the saints. And the four living creatures and the four and twenty elders, that's the church, falling down before the Lamb. So the Lamb of John chapter 1, okay, 
verses 29 through 34. That's the Lamb of God when here on the earth died for our sin. That same Lamb is the one that will take the title deed of the earth because he is the creator and the redeemer. And we are those, the church, that is redeemed by his blood. Paid the price. Yes. Okay. Now, let's look, if you will, please, in the book of 1 Peter, the very passage that you have quoted. The book of 1 Peter for just a moment. Now, let's understand the context. We must always look at things in context. So look in the book of 1 Peter. We're not getting these guys. The book of 1 Peter. I'm trying to get our constituency on here. I can't seem to find them. So give me one moment. All right, 1 Peter. Chapter 1, I'm going to start in verse 13. Okay, so Timothy, can you read verses 13 down to 21 for us? 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 13 to 21, please. 13 says, Wherefore, guard up the lions of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, as the uh, he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. 17. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judge according to every man's work past the time of your sojourn, sojourning here in fear. Verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but which the precious blood of G of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That is it, Pastor. Okay, in verse 20, who verily was foreordained, that means um, was forepurposed, um, okay, before the foundation of the world was manifest that means brought to light in these last times for you. Verse 21. Who by him do believe in God who raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Okay, let's look at the word precious for a minute. But before we do that, remember that Peter was writing the Christian church who had been dispersed uh, in these six regions of the Roman Empire. And he is letting them know who they are in Christ, and he is not allowing them to think that because they're going through this persecution and such, that somehow the standard is lower. And he is saying, gird up the loins of your mind. Um, now, that is a what we call a Greek metaphor. So in the Middle Eastern culture, they, they wore long robes to protect their legs from sun and dust. But when it came time to work or labor, they would tuck that up into their like belt that they had um, so that their legs could be free to work. He's saying, let the loins of your mind uh, gird them up. Be sober, spiritually aware, and hope confident expectation under the end of, of grace and the end of grace is eternal the the eternal abode the eternal state that is to be brought unto you at the revelation making manifest truth 
of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, that is submitting oneself, uh, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Uh, that we're not to be uh, living like along with the lust of the world. Okay, in the nature of the mind. But as he who hath called you, that is God's election. But as he who hath called you is holy. That's the consummation of his person. That's the consummation of his person. So be ye holy in all manner of life. Because it is written... Be ye holy, for I am holy. We are to mirror or mimic who God is. Okay? Now, that's the context here. And God is who has called us, we're to call on the Father. And we're to pass the time of our sojourning because we're citizens of heaven, remember? And we are not, I'm getting a lot of background noise. We are not uh, those who uh, ought to live like um, we're going to be in this world forever. We're not. We're sojourners. We're passing through. Um, and notice, for his, and we're to pass our time in fear. That's reverential trust in God. For as much as ye you know that you're not redeemed with corruptible things, not the silver and the gold. Uh, they were to bring silver and gold for redemptive purposes to the tabernacle in the Old Testament. Uh, receive from tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So we're getting a description of the blood and the person of Jesus Christ. He's without blemish. He's without spot. Okay? Um, he's the one who's perfect. And he is the one that was pre or foreordained. And that word has to do foreordination. That which is done ahead of time. Purposed ahead of time. Okay? Um, now, I want to concentrate on this word uh, precious in a moment. Um, now, he's the one that has redeemed us. That our faith and hope might be in God. Not in a religious tradition. You see, that's the context here. So, when we... When we are discussing the blood of Christ. We're discussing that which is the holy, uh, infinite, perfect sacrifice of God for us in our place. Okay? Amen. Amen. All right, now look in the book of Mark because we get a good example of what precious looks like. Now let's see if I can find this. When I'm on a question, I don't have notes. So look in Mark, if you will. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. What is the meaning of the blood of Christ? James, are you there? Yes, Pastor. Yes. Okay, I can't see you. Can I see you and your dad, please? Look in Mark chapter 14. Uh, Actually, that is uh, not well. Uh, I, I was attending to him because he was uh, starting to get uh, um, weak uh, this morning. Okay. When he was coming to church. He fell down. So, oh, no. So uh, I was trying to, uh, to attend to him. All right. Let's all pray for Pastor Obadiah, okay? Pastor Obadiah needs prayer. So put that on your list. All right, precious. What does that look like? Hello, are you guys there? Came on Cooley. I lost. You're there. Are you there? Hello? Hello? We are there. Okay. Look in Mark chapter 14, verse 3. Mark 14, 3. Mary of Bethany. Mary of Bethany. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat eating, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment 
of spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured the ointment on his head. Now understand how this works. This is in Peter's house. So Mary took this expensive spikenard. Now over here in the West... I equate that with someone's um, retirement plan, all of his money, everything he owns, okay? Uh, think of all of the um, um, expense and value of, of that, okay? Someone's lifetime savings, okay? And they just break it and throw it all on a person. Now, when they would eat in those days, they would lay down and eat. Um, that that um, that famous picture of um, the apostles or disciples around the table with Jesus uh, is wrong. <laughs> they were actually laying on couches around the Passover feast. And that's how she was able to anoint his head. Okay. And now in verse 4, and there, and there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why, why was this waste of the ointment made? It was very, very precious, very valuable. And she just poured it all out on Jesus right there and then, all at once, okay? And for it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and have been given to the poor, and they murmured against her. It would be like... Um, a hundred million shillings. Okay? All right? And let's say that uh, Pastor Ted, even more than that, let's say that Pastor Ted has 500 million shillings. Okay? And I would just throw it all on one person. Can you imagine that? <laughs> okay. And so um, that's what Mary of Bethany was doing. And notice, if you will, and Jesus said, Let her alone, why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. You see, Mary was with the program by faith. She was preparing Jesus for the burial. She believed in what Jesus said. The disciples weren't in the program. Their mind was on reigning on the left hand and right hand in the kingdom. They weren't listening. Mary was listening and understood. And she's preparing his body for the burial pre-cross. Okay? Now, notice. For ye have the poor with you always. And whenever ye will, ye may do, good, do them good. But me have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for the burial. So you see, this alabaster box was actually a big tube. And this ointment um, was, was very, very expensive. I mean, Mary of Bethany had it made for herself. She could have sold that in increments and lived a very happy, prosperous life. But instead, she broke it and poured it all on Jesus Christ. Now, notice... Verse 9, Verily I say unto you, wherever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Do you know that Jesus doesn't say this about anybody else in the Bible except himself? This do in remembrance of me? This is the only other person that Jesus says this to make sure you remember this woman. Why does Jesus tell us to do that? Because she took what was thought of as a beyond value and poured it out all on Jesus Christ. Okay? That's how precious Jesus was to Mary. Now, that gives us a limited idea of the preciousness of Christ. Okay? Now, turn with me to the book of Hebrews so that we understand 
Okay, so that we understand. And by the way, um, I'm going to have Timothy uh, summarize my message at the end in Lugandan. Okay? He didn't know that. Now he does. <laughs> Look in the book of <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9. The blood of Christ. What does it mean? It means that when his blood was shed, he, uh, he offers the world by grace eternal redemption. Eternal redemption. He came with his own blood. He comes with his own blood. And let me just say a few other words. Uh, Paul, in the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 28, describes God's people or God's church as the blood boughten of Christ. The blood boughten of Christ. Okay? So look here in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. We have just look, looked at the, a comparison of the old tabernacle of Israel and Jesus' uh, blood. And notice in verse 11 of Hebrews chapter 9. But Christ, being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Now, underscore those two words, greater and more perfect. Hebrews tells us about perfect. That means a completeness. Completeness. It's the same word as finished. When Jesus says, it is finished, he brings to completion. Like when Colossians says, ye are complete in him in the Godhead bodily. Completeness, perfection. And notice, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. Not the tabernacle of the Old Testament we just described, which is a type of Jesus to come. Neither by the blood of goats and calves. Those sacrifices made atonement. Those sacrifices only covered sin at one meant atonement. But his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. That's the meaning of his blood. Okay? That's the meaning of his blood. That he brings us to completeness, perfection. And that he enters into the Holy of Holies in the presence of Jesus. His blood is sprinkled on the altar in heaven. Okay? Once. He is the once for all sacrifice for sin. His blood um, is the uh, everlasting atonement. His blood purchases purchases redemption eternally, entered in once into the holy place, having obtained what kind of redemption? Eternal redemption. Just as when we are saved, for God so loved the world that he gave, sacrificially gave, his only begat son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish or be ruined from the original estate, but possess everlasting life. Now notice, for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh. Sanctification means to be made holy. How much more shall the blood of Christ this is grace. Whenever we see how much more, that's grace in action. Grace bringing us to a complete place. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit 
offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. For this cause, he's the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressors under the First Testament, that they who are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now, three times the word eternal is used. He is offered by the eternal spirit. He has purchased us eternal redemption. And he has given us an eternal inheritance. How can he do that? Because he is the mediator. And he's the testator. The testator of a promise or will must die to enforce it. Jesus Christ died that his New Testament would be enforced. And he is the mediator, the one who presents us to God and God to man. He is the mediator of that New Testament. Okay? So the testator and the mediator of this New Covenant is the same who brought his blood to purchase us an eternal redemption. So this is the value. That's what it means, the precious blood. That's what the blood of Christ means to us. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So look, if you will, please, in verse um, chapter 9 still of Hebrews, verse... Um, 20. It discusses here how Moses had to sprinkle everything in the tabernacle with the blood. Okay? And it would set yeah. apart those vessels and the, the tent itself. Uh, it would set apart all of that for the holy work of God. Okay? Now verse 20. Yeah. Saying, this is the blood of the testament. That's the Old Testament. He was... That, that we're talking about, which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. They're listed over here in chapter 9, 1 through 10. Okay? All of those vessels picture Christ, by the way. And the tabernacle itself, even the colors of it, testify about Jesus Christ. Now, verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. Now that's the great principle. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. So under the Old Testament, when they would bring their sacrifice, remember in the Old Testament, the book of Leviticus, they would put their hands on the head of the lamb. And when they, would, when they would cut the throat, and the blood would come over into the altar. Um, they, they, their sins were imputed to that sacrifice. Okay? So Jesus Christ, when he sheds his blood, he sheds his blood for the whole world. He's the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world, not just Israel. Okay? He is, he brings eternal redemption for every people, every language, every, every tribe, every nation. He brings unlimited redemption. Whoever believes is redeemed. Okay? That's what his blood means. This blood takes away the sin, past, present, and future. Okay? And the shedding of his blood brings eternal forgiveness. It expiates sin. It takes away sin. Not merely atones it. Even the atoned sin under the Old Testament. Okay? Okay. So what does the blood mean? Um, the blood brings us redemption. The blood brings us forgiveness. The blood brings us possession. 
We are the blood bought of Jesus Christ. We belong to him. When Jesus redeems us, he redeems body, soul, and spirit. We, he has purchased us out of the market, out from the curse of the law. So look in the book of Galatians. Look in the book of, boy, I got to stop here in a minute. Look in the book of, this is a big subject, by the way. <laughs> okay, but look in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Galatians 3, 13. Okay? Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse in our place. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. For it is written, cursed is everyone who, hang, who hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham, the blessings of the promise, might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Jesus is the seed of faith. And the curse of the law is this. If you offend in one part all of the law, you're guilty of the whole thing. So that curse of the law is upon us. But he's redeemed us from the curse of the law. Okay? Another passage on redemption. Um, notice with me in chapter 4, verse 4 of Galatians. Galatians 4, 4. Notice, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. You see, the Redeemer came under the law and he kept the law. The law is fulfilled in Christ. And we are in him and he has bought us and purchased out of the marketplace of sin. So he has redeemed us that were under the law. And all, man is, all men are under the law. The book of Romans 3 teaches us this. Okay, the book of Romans teaches us that we are all under the law. We're, none of us are we're all guilty before God. And by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified. And the law teaches us that we're all sinners. But he has redeemed us from the curse of the law and from the law itself. Redemption purchased us. Um, let's, I got to stop. I really need to go further. Um, Timothy, are you still there? Timothy? Timothy. Okay, no Timothy. Okay. Um, I'm sorry? James? Is it really off? It looks like they went off. Yeah, I've got logistical interference with what you just said, James. It broke up. I'm sorry. Hi, Moses. <laughs> okay, I have Moses here. Um, okay, I yeah. think that's okay. Yeah, that he's one who's who is um, on individually by phone number. Um, you know what's happening in the DRC? We have too many people for the group. So we're going to have to put them on, um, oh, what do you call it? Zoom here. Okay. So things are spreading. Okay. James, I'm going to have you give us a word of prayer. And then um, uh, I think I got most of what this young lady was asking me, the meaning of the blood of Christ. So if you would please uh, close us in prayer in Luganda, and I would appreciate it. James? James? Okay, I'll pray. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you today for who thou art. We pray that you would bless us, that your face would shine upon us. Father, we thank you for the 
invaluable eternally and infinitely blood of Christ who has purchased us through the eternal spirit an eternal redemption and an eternal inheritance by the mediator and testator of the new covenant, the new testament. And Father, we thank you that we're redeemed out of the marketplace of sin, that we're redeemed from the curse of the law and the law itself, that Christ has redeemed us by his blood out of every tongue, out of every language, out of every people, out of every nation, to be a kingdom of priests for him and reign with him. Father, we thank you for this blessed and precious blood of Christ who was ordained before the foundation of the world that we might be made uh, one in him and have this eternal payment of price. And Father, we thank you for this question. And Father, may we uh, live as those that are the blood bought of Jesus Christ. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Moses, it's nice to see you. <laughs> nice to meet you, Pastor. Yes, please. Thank you. You're Thank you for the word. You're so welcome. It, it, you know, to, to God, give, let's give God the glory, yes? Amen. Sounds like the rooster is. <laughs> All right. God bless you, Moses. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Yes. James, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay. Um, our connection with you today is, is a little rough, but um, I need these other guys on here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm getting that logistical. Yeah. 